danger of being shut down because of low enrollment. But some parents in the Catholic system said they'd like a school dedicated to the arts. So in the fall of 1979, George Vanier became a fine arts school. Two years later, the board appointed Dolores Haberman as principal. Five years ago, I came here to George Vanier as principal. And I really liked what I saw happening, but I felt that the high that was there shouldn't be. Um, fine arts, any, anyone who's ever worked in any of the areas of fine arts knows how much work there is to the process of, of, of learning and becoming, whether it be in art, music, drama, or dance. And we decided that we needed to make it a program where uh, if you were going uh, to George Vanier, if reading and social studies and religion were a part of the program, so was art, so was music, so was dance, so was drama. And so we put all of those subjects part and parcel into the program. And it, so at any given time throughout the school year, if you were coming to George Vanier as a student, you should expect to be receiving instruction in those areas. So I was looking for a job and I wasn't really sure, you know, where I would get anything. Um, Mrs. Hardman interviewed me because of my arts background and I got the job eventually. I was very fortuitous in getting my internship at the school and uh, it was production time and I was really lucky to get involved in production time and uh, the following year I was hired to be the grade 6-7 teacher and so since I've been there now for two years and it's been a very exciting time. My children were here because of the fine arts program and because we're in the neighborhood. We live two blocks from this school and um, when I was investigating the possibilities for schools for my own children I looked here as well as elsewhere because they were in the Montessori program at the, same, at, at the time and I came and talked to Mrs. Hoberman who then found out I was interested in getting back to teaching myself and, um, and showed some interest in, in having me possibly be part of her staff because I had been a parent here already two years with my, my oldest, Jana D, who was in grade uh, two at the time that I was investigating the possibilities for the, the youngest child who was still in Montessori. And um, so I put an application in at the separate school board as well as the public school board, and here I am. I started teaching a part-time when I was uh, working at the university. I was working at the university, so I had a nice steady job. And uh, I used to go in two mornings a week to do the drama program as a, as a resource teacher. And uh, I try and work there whenever I can now. So I have a sort of arrangement with them when I'm, when I'm working on a play, like in Persephone, or I'm out of town working on a play. I don't, but when I'm, when I'm not working on a, on a professional show, I spend my time with George Vanier. And they do a production there every year. So I try and be there for that, for that time. When uh, we look at hiring a teacher, we look at you know, where our needs are in that particular grade and their particular expertise, whether it be formal or personal interest or experience in one of the areas of fine arts. And always we try to, to hire people that would be comfortable with uh, a fine arts program, which in this school sometimes requires a fair bit of flexibility in terms of your, your personal style of teaching. I've studied music and uh, I have a little bit of background there so it, it was more an attitude towards arts as opposed to having any kind of formal training. I was a professional actor for about eight years not here in Canada but in, in Europe. We do teach academics here this you know it, it's still a school first and foremost so I think that that attitude is always there that you know you have to do your math and your language arts and that sort of thing but I think that there's an attitude on top of that that is just more than anything uh, an openness to different ideas and an openness to, uh, to uh, fine arts, whereas in perhaps a lot of parts of our society, um, fine arts aren't really accepted. So there's, there's a real openness towards it. Uh, I'm just thinking of some of the people that I've, I've had in my classes. Um, they're, they're good academically or they're good in sports, but they still have an openness to fine arts, so they've, they've really kind of opened themselves up in a different direction that they may not have uh, somewhere else. The other thing that we have done and continue to develop uh, is integrating the fine arts with the religion, the language arts, the social sciences. 
And so oftentimes the children may not be aware that this is happening, but they may have a social studies program that has a, a music component, that has an art component, that may well have a drama component. To it, a, and uh, to ask them at any given time, what subject are you taking? They might not be sure. Every chance I get, I try and, uh, and allow them to draw, uh, rather than use stencils or use uh, particular uh, types of, um, of work that comes from a workbook, for example. I try and integrate uh, their own oral expression or their own artwork or their own singing or their own making up of one thing or another. Uh, when we talk about uh, science or social studies, social studies this, in social studies this year, we, we did quite an extensive unit on the city in grade three. And uh, it was fun to dramatize what it would be like to be various uh, people in various occupations, for example. Naturally, if they come from a different school, they at first have these questions. Am I taking music now? Um, is this social studies? Is this science? But after a while, they begin to understand that, that, that all knowledge is all is holistic and that they begin to appreciate and understand the connections between all the various disciplines, whether they be in the area of science or the arts, that all of them are intertwined in some way. In this school, it's okay to play basketball and draw. In this school, it's okay to want to be involved in drama and be a grade eight student. Uh, it's okay to think music other than the rock music is okay. Uh, that isn't always the case. It's okay to not want to do sports, but be involved in drama or in art here. And that's a process, that's a mind thing that needs to come over a period of time. And in the five years I've been here, that I think is the one place where I've seen the difference. It's all right to be you, and, and that has had to come by almost the youngest kid, uh, and, and that's six, seven, eight years, moving through the process. The other children who come here because of the fine arts program, they already know what the givens are. I come here because it's fine arts school, so that's okay. We'll be back to meet a few of the students attending George Vanney School in just a moment. Back. On Saskatoon today, we're looking at children and the arts. Enrollment at George Vanier School has increased since it was designated as a fine arts school in 1979. And most of the students going to the school come from outside the boundaries of the neighborhood. Uh, I would say we have approximately 160 students. And I would tell you that approximately 55 of them live in this area. The rest come from all other parts of the city, um, many of them because their parents feel that a fine arts program is good for them, many of them because they themselves think that this is what they want. It's more creative than other schools because I know I've talked to some of my friends and there it's just you got your straight social, your straight um, music, whatever. It's not sort of integrated like it is here. It's the closest and it's a Catholic school. I didn't really know that it was fine art school when I came here. People like they can choose to go to a uh, school where all their friends are on the other side of town, but instead they choose to come to this school. And like, I like drama in the sense that um, it helps you with the other classes and how to like express your feelings more and stuff like that. I was into drama for a lot, for a lot of years in Edmonton, so. When I moved here, I decided, well, I should try it out. My sister used to go here, too, and I really liked it. And then when, when we moved out to the farm, I still wanted to go. I really wanted to go, because I love the school. <laughs> well, I went to one year of French immersion at St. Matthew, and my mom, I guess she read about it. So she sent me and my two brothers here. There's not a lot different from any other school, except for the programs. You know, after a while, you don't really even realize that you're getting different programs. It sort of teaches you to express yourself better and not to be so nervous about what your feelings are as such. Because, you know, you get up there and usually you're afraid to get up in front of the whole school and say something or whatnot because all your friends are out there or in front of other schools. 
But really, when you're up there, like our drama teacher said, you're there and you're doing a certain job, and for two hours you can be what you normally aren't are. There's only three fine arts schools, designated fine arts schools in Canada, so there's no other ones in Saskatoon, so it's real special. Doing drama in an elementary school is completely different from doing professional theatre because uh, what's more important is not the final product but the process. And kids, it's, that's how kids learn, is by playing and by doing and by pretending. So, um, so really drama is a way of teaching them about, about communication skills, about all sorts of things, as well as we try and find a play which has a central theme. And the theme from this play is about walls. So we got each classroom to find out what that meant to them, about walls between people, walls between kinds of people. And uh, each classroom explored that in their own way. And we're using all their different ideas in the play at some point or other. What I tried to do this year was so the kids could be part of the, the whole process, is we got this play, and it's by Rod McIntyre, a local writer from Saskatoon here. And so they could be part of the whole process. We sort of asked them to rewrite it from three to about 105. So everyone could be involved. We actually have 15 central characters. And uh, what we did was the, the kids came up with their ideas about how we could make it bigger. And, and uh, Mr. Michael Betty and I gave our ideas and Rod gave his ideas. So, and then Rod went away and rewrote it. And uh, the kids could be part of the rewriting process to see what's behind the play. No, they don't get a finished script this time. They get a, a script that they're part of making the finished product. You shouldn't do that. Why? Because. You shouldn't do that. Why? Because. At the grade 7 and 8 level, you can really tell the kids that have been here for a while as opposed to the ones who've just been in for the last couple of years. Um, I think sometimes you can really find that they have developed an attitude towards uh, fine arts that maybe kids who haven't been here as long don't have yet. To tell a child in grade 1 or 2 that his drawing or her drawing is, is wonderful is pretty well accepted. Uh, by the time that they get to grade three, four, five, if they've come from an environment where um, they weren't sure all the time if they were meeting teachers' expectations, it's very hard to break that down again and make the child confident that, that their artwork, for example, is okay. What we really need here in Canada is from the kids, from students, from children, a demand that we have more culture in this nation. And that was what got me into education. I did a couple of Canada Council performances in the Western provinces, but felt that we needed a larger public. And I needed it to, to grow from children, so that the children would demand much, much more culture from our country. For some of our children, some of our children, their strength isn't in the academics. And when you are 11 or 12 or 13 or 14, knowing you're okay somewhere in your life is really, really important. I guess when you're a grown-up, that's important. And if you can have one strength, such as being an artist and being known for the artist of the school and maybe even have your little showing, or your strength is in drama, and maybe math is not the biggest thing in your life or, you know, making a basket, in, in basketball or throwing a, a, a volleyball. But if somewhere along the way you can be okay, um, that is really important. And for some of our kids, that's the success that starts them finding out that they, somewhere inside of them, are all right and they start to be. Does that make sense? Yes. That's what happens. And that, I think, th that I see as one of the grandest values of a fine arts program. Uh, aside from the fact that it is one fun way of learning, uh, of enjoying school. George Vanier School is in the Avalon District of Saskatoon. Next, we're going to the Mendel Art Gallery to look at 